Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video all about my 2018 goals. This is actually kind of like a hard video for me to make. I know that's abnormal. I'm a YouTuber. I should be ready and able and willing to put literally everything out there, but I'm weird. I have walls even after a million years on YouTube, but I feel inspired to do this. I was on a flight and I was making this huge long list of things that stress me out, things that I need to do whenever I got back in town because I've been traveling so much and it was the holidays and blah, blah, blah. I just haven't been able to do the things that I need to do. And I've been so consumed with just keeping my head above water basically. And I have so much going on. It's like everything is due today. And I started kind of like coming up with a list for this video. I've never felt like doing this kind of video in the past and that kind of made me like look at myself like what are you doing? Why are you doing this different thing? Why are you deciding to share yourself with the world all of a sudden after all of these years? And I realized it's kind of more of a life update. This is a moment where I can talk to you guys about what's going on with me. Hopefully you guys can get it. Hey, if you have advice for me, I'm open to that. If you guys are struggling with the same things, we can talk about it in the comments. I love that. I love when we can do that. I feel like that's what YouTube and social media are for. When they're at their best, I feel like that's the purpose. You know what I mean? So these are goals, it's a life update. I have four different things and it's basically like four different ways that I wanna change my life or that I need to change my life. And the first one is somewhere where I've been struggling for a really long time and it's my work-life balance. And I've talked about this in the past, oh, about a million times because Ever since I started my channel, I've been working multiple jobs. I've been in school, I've been out of school. I've been, you know, doing all of these big life changes that you do in life. And I've always been spread really, really thin. If you have a YouTube channel, you know, maintaining a YouTube channel, staying with your schedule, making videos, editing, all of that, it takes so much time. And I feel like somehow it's not getting easier. It's only taking more and more time as like the more I get into it and the more I learn and stuff like that, which I love it. I love YouTube, but my work life balance has become more of a problem, I guess, uh, especially ever since I started my relationship with Grant. And that's not on Grant at all. It just made me more aware of the way I live my life and where my priorities are and how that's probably not so good for a relationship slash maintaining a full life. I sort of talked about this in a video last year and I do think I have improved in the last year, but I definitely think that I still have a lot of work to go. And since we're getting married later this year, I feel like it's gonna be even more of an adjustment and I'm gonna have to improve way more so that I can be a present person in an actual marriage where I live with him. I've never lived with him before. And yes, we've, we've been around each other a whole, whole lot. So I don't think that's a problem or anything. He knows how I am. He knows how much I work. That's not a secret, but we definitely both agree I could have a more balanced life. And I think this is a problem that a lot of people deal with, but it's hard, especially when you have the job that I have and you have you know, a YouTube channel, it's kind of like, I have to do everything. Like if I don't do it, it won't get done. And it stresses me out so much. And um, my goal is basically to have more structured like work hours, have more structured time off. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know how I'm gonna make that happen because for so many years, my identity and my worth has been so wrapped up in creative output and to always be working and always be busy and always be feeling like I am successful in a way. I mean, I know I'm not like a wild success on YouTube or anything, and I'm sure I don't come off like someone that's like, ah, oh, I'm like crazy about working and all that because that's not really like my personality, but it's what I do. That's my real life. Like I am working all the time and I'm like obsessed with it. But more and more I'm seeing that that's something that has to change, especially going forward in this year with all of the things that I have on my plate, getting married, moving somewhere, question marks constantly. There are a lot of things coming up, a lot of changes, a lot of parts of my life that I want to enjoy and I want to focus on and I want to like live it up. I don't want to just like race through everything like I pretty much have been doing for the past, I don't know, 10 years. I'm like sweating talking about this. I don't know why. 
But in the last year, I have done better with taking a step back like at my real job. Um, I've been working from home a lot more, especially with like traveling so much more, with like going to interviews with Grant and also like going and doing work things outside of Houston, Texas a lot more in the last year. I work from the morning to the night and I don't stop. Like I really enjoy work, so it's fine for me to just like keep working all night, but I just I just don't want to have I just don't want to start my family like that. You know what I mean? I've got to make changes with my real job. I've got to make changes with YouTube. I have to make changes with how I do things because I need to breathe. <laughs> I need to live and I've been feeling like I'm dying for way too long. Okay, next up on my list, but this one is a huge one and it makes me so nervous to talk about it. I want to change my diet to hopefully improve my health. I know that sounds like the most basic, like New Year's resolution-y kind of thing, and it is, but there's more to the story. A couple of months ago, uh, you might have seen if you watch my vlog channel, <laughs> This is gonna get a little TMI, I am sorry, but this is what's going on with me. Uh, I went to a music festival in Joshua Tree and I had a period that was like the apocalypse. It was the worst thing that had ever happened to me in that realm ever. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, it was it was just the worst. You guys might be rolling your eyes and saying like, mm, it's your period, you're fine. But it was horrible and it was really scary to me and what was even scarier is for about a year before that, I hadn't had a cycle. I had done one little round of these hormones that you can take that will make you have a cycle, but it's not its not real, you know? So I already knew I wasn't in a good place. I knew something was up, but every time I would go to the doctor and I kept going to different doctors, um, they would just be like, oh, you're too skinny. That's why you're not having a period. And that's something that I've experienced on and off through my life. I've been on and off birth control, hormonal, like the pill, uh, for a little over 10 years. And so on times where I was off the pill, my period would be irregular. And that's what doctors always told me. Oh, you're thin. And it was generally just something that was dismissed. And generally doctors just told me, you should just go back on the pill because it will regulate your cycle big quotes because that's really not what it does. But no doctor ever actually investigated what was going on with me. Usually it was just like a two second like, you're good, you're too skinny, take the pill, whatever, get out of my office, give me my money. Can you tell I'm a little annoyed? No, actually I totally can't blame a doctor for it because I really wasn't investigating it either until more recently. I had this really terrible period and I had actually just gone to a different gynecologist and she basically just told me to get on the pill and that's not what I wanted to hear because I had been looking into it a little bit and I kept reading that hormonal birth control does not help you get your period on track. It's not a thing. At this point, I definitely don't need to be like educated on that, but that's where I was at at that point. Anyway, I found another doctor after that when I came back from the trip I went and she did a big panel of tests for me. And that's when I found out I have really low progesterone and I have PCOS. If you don't know what that is, just look it up. It's actually semi-common and a lot of women have it. Um, it's a hormone imbalance and it also affects your insulin levels or your insulin sensitivity. So it's definitely like a full body all over thing. It doesn't just affect your period. It can have a huge array of symptoms and probably the reason why I wasn't diagnosed with that sooner is because I don't have a lot of like the outward symptoms. Like a lot of times it can cause weight gain and I don't have that and like excess hair growth and hair loss and like all these kinds of things and I don't really think that I have those symptoms. That doesn't mean it couldn't come on later, but at this point I don't look like a PCOS patient according to the doctors that I've talked to. So I found that out in, I think it was November and that doctor too also explained to me that the best route for me was going on hormonal birth control so it would like calm down the chaos that is my hormones um, because it can actually be detrimental to you having a baby later on because your natural cycle just isn't functioning the way it should and the birth control just kind of like takes the reins and it just automates it and so it just like relaxes 
all the things that were like working on overdrive or just like misfiring basically. And then whenever you get off and you wanna have a baby, it makes it easier. I don't know if that's true. I've read so many things that says it's not true, but I've heard from so many doctors and one specific doctor that I really trust and I know that she really cares about me. Um, and she like really got deep into it. So ultimately I did decide to stop being stubborn and get back on hormonal birth control. And that has been horrible basically. And that's why I kept getting on and off of it in the past. I would always like switch to a different pill because they all have different hormone levels and I would have bad migraines, bad mood swings. I just wouldn't feel like myself, like having more anxiety and stuff like that. And I was just so done dealing with it. And I felt like birth control was just not for me. And so I'm back on it and I definitely haven't been feeling myself. I've been having a whole bunch of like really bad symptoms, but I'm really trying to give it a chance and I want to cry right now because probably because of birth control. <laughs> I've cried so much more lately. <sighs> and, and it's just awful and I don't know what to do and I feel like I'm backed into a corner. But there is hope because I've been investigating a lot of things, looking up a lot of things, watching a lot of YouTube videos, reading articles, all of that. And a lot of people say, that a low carb diet or the keto diet really, really helps improve PCOS symptoms, gets the cycle back on track, manages some of the other symptoms. Like, I mean, I don't have, I don't wanna lose weight. I don't wanna lose weight at all. I feel like I should gain weight, if anything. And um, so that part scares me, but I do want to try that. I wanna try the low carb diet. I'm terrified to try the keto diet. And honestly, I'm terrified to try it just because I've, I'm scared that I can't do it. I've never been on a diet in my life. Um, you guys know I eat like crap and that is a really hard lifestyle to break. I'm sure all of you guys, you know, you know how it is. Um, the addiction to sugar is very real. The addiction to bread, to pizza. And I'm just scared. I'm scared that I can't do it. And that scares me even more because I feel like that's a very like pathetic thing to say. Like, oh, I can't change my diet even though I feel like it could potentially really help my health. So I'm scared to tell you guys about that because I don't want you guys to be judging me, especially if I don't do it or I can't do it but I do want to try. Even though I am on hormonal birth control, so it's not like I'm really going to see the full effect if a low carb diet really does improve the PCOS situation, but I just feel like I need to do every little bit that I can. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be sticking with this, but I have to try it, basically. And I'm scared and I'm excited that there is some other route that seems more hopeful, um, but it's also just, it's really sad. I was really sad to find out about that. It's scary to find out that it could be really hard to have kids in the future because that is something that I want, but I know there's so many different ways to do it. And I know that I don't have to get all like anxiety ridden about that part of it right now. Right now, I feel like doing the birth control, even though I hate it, even though I kind of feel like it's not working out for me, I've got to give it a chance. And I also really want to give the low carb thing a chance too. I also kind of want to just put this out there because this is something that I'm majorly struggling with. Oh, and it makes me really sad. And, and it's definitely really affected my mood and it's definitely really, and it's definitely really, really affected me. And, and I feel super overwhelmed by it. And I feel super overwhelmed with like everything going on right now. Like I said, I feel like everything in my life is due right now or it's late basically. And then this on top of everything, it's just like, wow, I don't know if I can handle all of this, but I'm gonna try. And I'm also really interested if any of you guys have PCOS, if you wanna talk about it, and if you've tried like the low carb thing or whatever, um, I'd really like encouragement. I would really hope that a lot of people don't wanna say like discouraging things, um, but obviously you're gonna say what you wanna say. But more so, I just would love to hear from you guys. What's up? What's up with you? Cause this is what's up with me. And right now it feels pretty overwhelming and discouraging, but 
I'm gonna try the diet change thing. I tried it for a while in November, December, but then whenever I was traveling and it was Christmas, I just felt like I couldn't. Like, I guess I just don't know enough about it on how to make it work when I'm eating out and stuff, but I really wanna dig in and I really wanna try hard. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for so long, that whole PCOS thing probably should have been its own video. I'm sorry, I'm just rolling all of this into one. But the third thing on my list is to take care of my environment. I'm not saying declutter, but that's obviously what it means. My house is crazy. And this one definitely relates back to the work-life balance in a huge way because I'm just basically constantly trying to keep my head above water. And unfortunately, I live alone and nobody ever comes in my house and is like, all right, Leanne, your house better be perfectly clean and organized. Like, no one's checking in on this. I have other people like you guys or like a boss at work and like they say, okay, this is due then, this is due then. And I have just never gotten it together with my home. And since I'm gonna be moving later in the year, unless we stay in Houston by some miracle, you know, there's a chance of that, but it's not very big. And uh, basically I just need to like throw away like all my stuff. <laughs> like that is not even a joke. Like I just wanna start over. It's just my stuff stresses me out. And for some reason, my instinct is to just keep things all the time. And I don't like that. And I need to change that. I need to change that for my sanity when I move later in the year. And I also just need to change it because day to day, it stresses me out. And the last thing on my list is like emotional self-care slash therapy. Um, in the last, I don't know, six months or so, I've realized that I probably need to get into counseling, like one-on-one. -on -one. Grant and I have been doing premarital counseling and I've realized, which honestly, I've known this for a long time, I need to have a counselor myself, like someone that I can talk to because I just get really filled with anxiety and I feel like I'm like not doing life right, basically. And that can be really discouraging. And then at that point, I kind of just like, isolate basically I don't know what this hand movement was it's definitely the official sign language for isolating but I know that's not good and I know that I have so many different things that I can improve especially to be better at relationships and also the relationship that I have with myself like I had a really difficult childhood I had a lot of issues growing up and unfortunately not all of those things just magically resolve. And I feel like, I don't know, there's a lot of ways that I could improve, if not my relationship with other people, but my relationship with myself. It's not that like, oh, my whole life is falling apart or anything. It's just, I always wanna get better. And I feel like that's something that could really help. And I just feel now that I'm ready to do that. And I feel like it's something that could really help me sort through things in my head and feel like I can let things out. I thought about doing it like online because they have like different apps where you can do online therapy because like I said, I'm like so, so busy and I can't even imagine doing one more thing. Like adding one more thing to my list like makes me cry instantly because I'm just like, I can't do it all. And again, that could be like the birth control emotions, but I have to figure out a way to prioritize it because I, I don't know, I gotta take care of myself. Okay, I'm seeing it now that I'm done with the list. It's like a life update, but it's also like a self-care goals list. And right now I just feel like things are kind of a mess, honestly. But I feel like I have a semi-clear vision of how I want things to be and at least that's a start. Basically, I'm just always trying to get better and hopefully I have y'all support and I wanna be here more. I wanna share more. I feel like there's so much more I could share, but I haven't. I love having fun with you guys. You guys are my happy place. Please don't tell me to stop doing YouTube to like balance out my life because that ain't gonna happen. I love YouTube. I love it. <laughs> I can't imagine a non-subscriber would get this far in the video, but if you have, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. You are my people. You can find me on social media. It's Leanne Says absolutely everywhere. I would love to have a conversation with you in the comments down below, so feel free. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. <sighs> this is the level of a procrastinator I am.
I can sit here for a while doing this. Why am I sweating so much? It's this Elmo sweater, it's killing me. <laughs> Just excuse the fact that I'm sweating. 